ومن استنى بسنته واحتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد حياكم الله my dear brothers and sisters to this uh, very special uh, session uh, which is uh, today about uh, the virtue of or the virtues of the month of Shaban and how to prepare for Ramadan. Uh, but before that, we are going to go through some questions uh, from the previous session of last week. So, inshallah, we begin with that. Naam, uh, tafadl. Hi, Doctor. Sheikh, I, I gave you the, the questions. If I go to the page, uh, it will take the camera off. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, so uh, the brother asks about, uh, I'm not sure if it was related to the topic, but it, it possibly can be from last week, but the brother says, no. can we do tisbih with both right and left hand? If we no. can't with the left hand, can you give us the evidence? Uh, no, uh, the Prophet as a uh, uh, the mother of believers, Aisha radiallahu anha, said that he, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, used to uh, uh, use his right uh, in everything which is virtue, such as giving, taking, eating, and uh, tasbih. So, um, uh, the tasbih should be by, first of all, by hand, not by the uh, beads or what they call it, uh, tasbih, the subha. Uh, and the second thing, and even not with the counter, the, the digital or whatever uh, counter, uh, but it should be with the hand. And with the hand, with the hand, it should not be by the uh, finger nuts, but by fingers. As the Prophet ﷺ said, أعقد التسبيح بالأنامل بالأنامل I say, Subhanallah, 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 and like that. And uh, uh, it should be with the right hand as uh, we said that uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, used to like doing everything uh, with his right, uh, yani with his right, either hand or whatever. As in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha in Sina al Nisa'i, authenticated by Al Albani, uh, where uh, the mother of believers said that. Uh, uh, كان يحب الت... أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يحب التيامن uh, ما استطاع في طهوره وتنعله وترجله. صلى الله عليه وسلم used to like uh, doing everything in uh, uh, or with his right right hand or uh, as much as he can as much as he can uh, and in other hadith even in uh, when he gives, when he takes. So this, that's why the ulama said the tasbih, Sheikh al-Albani rahimahullah, said that the tasbih should not be by the left, only by the right, because the right is used for everything and it uh, has a virtue, has a value, every valuable thing. And the left hand is for uh, يعني, cleanliness for the dirt and like that. Uh, the next question uh, is in Arabic, but uh, I'll. Yeah, no problem. Uh, تريدوا بالإنجليزي أو فقط بالعربي؟ أو ممكن تجاوب بالعربي ونترجم بالإنجليزي يا شيخ. لل... لل... طيب. 
the questioner says that uh, when uh, subrogating for uh, the deceased who is buried already in his grave, how should that be? Is it facing the grave, facing the Qibla, or how? First of all, uh, making dua for the deceased which is buried already uh, by, by the grave is right after the uh, person is buried, okay? Right after the person uh, is bu buried, the sunnah is to remain there and for a while making dua. Uh, uh, in this dua, one should not face the, yani, the qabr intentionally, deliberately, yani, meaning like, because you are not uh, talking to the dead, the deceased, you are not uh, directing the speech to him. You are asking Allah. Uh, from the etiquettes of dua is to face the qibla and raise your hands. But you can make dua even uh, when you are not facing the qibla, facing anywhere else. But if you face the grave deliberately, thinking that it is better to face the grave, then that is bid'ah. That is not sunnah, that is bid'ah. Okay, but if you just made dua, you did not mean to face the grave, you did not mean to do anything, but just make dua, no problem. No problem. Like this dua we said, when the person, when the dead person is buried, uh, and in that time, when you go with the janazah and it is buried. Like after that, when you come and visit the graveyard and you know the grave of your relative or friend or like that, what you do, there is no special dua for him or her. But there is a, a dua that the Prophet uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yani, uh, taught us when he, when he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, said, uh, as in the hadith of Ziyarat uh, al-Qubur, uh, hadith of Ziyarat al-Qubur, where um, uh, where Isa Salam said to Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, uh, to say, Assalamu alaykum ahl al-diyar min al-muslimin al -muslimin wal muslimin وَإِنَّ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ لَاحِقُونَ يَرْحَمُ اللَّهُ الْمُسْتَقْدِمِينَ مِنَّا وَالْمُسْتَأْخِرِينَ نسأل أسأل الله لنا ولكم العافية أسأل الله لنا ولكم العافية uh, Like that you say السلام عليكم uh, أهل الديار People of this uh, this uh, places or yani, uh, habit, uh, or the inhabitants of these graves from the believers from the believers and the Muslims or Muslimin and it is mentioned both of them because not uh, because every mu'min is a Muslim but not every Muslim is a mu'min as Allah Ta'ala said قَالَتِ الْأَعْرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُ أَسْلَمْنَا وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلْ إِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ As Allah Ta'ala said in this ayah, and, and the Arab, the Bedouin said, we believe. Allah said, rather say, uh, do not say we believe, but rather say, uh, we became Muslims. And until they uh, believe the true faith, subtle in your heart, then you can say. So uh, in that you say, Assalamu alaikum. And it's, you see, it is plural. Alaykum. All of them. Naam. Ahl al-Diyar. Min al-Mu'mineen wa al-Muslimin. Wa inna insha'Allah wa bikum lahiqun. And we, by the will of Allah, are following you to this, these places. Because everyone will die. Yarhamullahu uh, al-Mustaqdameen minna al-Mustaqdameen. May Allah's mercy be upon the, the, the one who preceded and the one who are following. Uh, أَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ لَنَا وَلَكُمُ الْعَافِيَةِ I ask Allah for us and for you protection. Protection. For us protection from uh, from uh, يعني, uh, 
the uh, evil thoughts and beliefs and uh, evil of the dunya and uh, the uh, yani akhara. and for you the evil of the akhara, which is the punishment and uh, yani narrowness of the grave. Wallahu alam. Now, Zakhir, Sheikhna, there is one more question, but I think maybe as an extension to this. Now. Question is about surat, reading Surat Al Fatiha or Surat Yasin. How, what, what's your view about that? Surat Al Fatiha is a surah from uh, the Quran that is to be recited in every rak'ah of, the, of every prayer uh, for the uh, Imam and for the follower. Surat Al Fatiha is not to be recited by the wedding nor by the death nor by the graves, nor by anything else. Surat al-Fatiha is only for, as we said, reciting it. You can recite it uh, seven times over uh, someone who is ill or being stung by, by poisonous uh, insects, but not uh, for uh, other things such people do today when they uh, do the marriage contract, they say Al-Fatiha, and they recite, that is Bid'ah. Uh, or when someone die, they recite Al-Fatiha, that's Bid'ah. And reciting the Quran, when someone dies, that is Bid'ah. Why we say Bid'ah, Bid'ah, Bid'ah? Are we extreme? No, we are not extreme. We are uh, adhering the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu which is compulsory uh, because uh, the Prophet Sallallahu got married and the Sahaba got married and none of them recited Surah Al-Fatiha and uh, the Sahaba died in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu as well as some of his wives and uh, children and uh, uncle and cousins and but he did not recite Surah Al-Fatiha simply as simple as that nor that we should uh, pour water over the grave every time we visit. That is also bid'ah. Nor that we plant a, 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 a plant or a branch of a tree over the grave because that is bid'ah. How can this bid'ah and the Prophet Sallallahu done it? The Prophet Sallallahu done it based on what? He didn't do it with everyone. He didn't do it when he uh, buried... Um, uh, some of the Sahaba by his hand, but he did it with two only graves. Why? Because as he was uh, informed by Allah that these two people in these two graves uh, were upon major sins. And the Prophet ﷺ, uh, informed us to warn against those sins, not to show us what to do with the deceased. La. He said, these two are now being tortured for something uh, which is not major. And then he said, however, it is major, meaning it is not major if you want to do it. It's simple, it's easy, not big, but it is major as a crime, as a sin. What it is, one of them was always upon backbiting and surrendering. And the other uh, did not use to uh, cover himself when he urinate from the eyes of others. Uh, know that he used to uh, protect his clothes and body from the reflection of urine. So for those two reasons, they are punished there in, the, in their graves. And then the Prophet uh, ordered someone to bring him a fresh uh, palm tree uh, branch and he broke it in two pieces and he stuck uh, each piece on each grave. And he said, the punishment would be reduced as long as these two uh, pieces of uh, the branch of the palm tree still wet, meaning still green. It means that it will die because when you break the branch, uh, even if you plant it, it's not going to grow. So what people are doing today uh, by planting a plant over the grave or pouring water, they are uh, witnessing that their relative or the one who is being buried 
someone who was uh, doing crimes. That's, that's bad. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. So once the, yeah, yes, there is a hadith for Surah Yasin, but when to be recited, when the person is in the process of death, not after he dies. La, if you are there by him and you see him now uh, struggling uh, with the with the process of death, the soul is coming out. That time you recite uh, Surah Yasin so that he uh, remembers yani, and, and say La ilaha illallah. And it is the time in, uh, in which you sit by him and say, la ilaha, don't tell him, say, la ilaha illallah, say, la ilaha illallah, that's wrong. But you yourself keep saying, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. So he may pick it and say, la ilaha illallah, and die. So this is what is uh, related to the death and the grave visiting, wallahu alam. Uh, Jazakallah khair, uh, Sheikhna. Really important um, and, and very uh, linked to the... the uh, and, uh, one more thing. Uh, if if, if uh, planting is, if, uh, yani a plant over the grave or watering is not permissible, then of course putting flowers and this is not permissible at all. It is, uh, it is even more crime. Why? Because it's an imitation of the kuffar. And if it is not permissible to recite Surah Al-Fatiha by the grave, then it is not permissible to put a sign or a, 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 yani, um, a tile written or grooved on it, uh, some verses of the Quran, or that's all wrong. That's all wrong. Or to marble the grave or raise it or put a signboard to say this is so and so. All this is not from the Sunnah. Barakallahu feekum. So last question, um, the, it's not related, but it's important for the brother. So the question, it's a brief question, is about, um, he says that he's lent money to somebody um, when he's calculating his zakah. Does he take it, does he use that in his calculation? Although obviously he doesn't have it in hand. He's, he's lent the money to somebody. I, if he... If he saves some money in the bank or in his safe in the house, should he give the zakah of it or not? Yes, of course he should. Now, that loan is uh, one of two uh, or has one of two uh, situations. It is either with someone who is capable to pay it back whenever the, this, this man, the lender, asks for it then the lender has to give the zakah when it is uh, due after one year. Uh, if, it is, uh, an, if there is an agreement that he will pay him after two years, then every year the lender has to give the zakah. If uh, he says to him, uh, I will return it whenever Allah gives me, which means no determined time or date or period. Then again, uh, then he, he need to look. If that person uh, is uh, capable to pay back because now he has money, but he, the lender, is feeling shy to ask, then he, the lender, has to give out zakah every year. If that person is poor, does not have enough money to pay back, or he, he has money, but every time the lender asks him to return the loan, he gives many excuses, or he may deny it, then in these three cases, he does not give out zakah of the loan until he gets it back, and he gives only for one year, even if it remained with the borrower for 10 or 15 or whatever years. So he does not give for all those years. Why? Because he was not uh, sure that the money is going to return. Now, wallahu alam. This is with the details. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Barakallah fi. Amin wa iya. Should we start with the no. Shaban? 
نعم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على محمد الرسول الله سيد الأولين والآخرين وإمام الأنبياء والمرسلين والشافع المشفع يوم الدين وعلى آله الطيبين وأزواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وصحابته الغر الميامين ومن استنى بسنته واهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد حياكم الله أيها الأخوة الأخوات Dear brothers and sisters You are welcome to this uh, uh, very special talk about the virtues of Shaban and how to prepare for Ramadan Shaban uh, is a month which is for the preparation for Ramadan and that's why the most uh worshiping deed that the Prophet used to concern about in the month of Shaban is fasting. As the mother of believers Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said uh, in the hadith reported by Bukhari and Muslim, she said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama yasumu hatta naqula la yuftir. وَيُفْطِرُ حَتَّى نَقُولَ لَا يَصُونَ She said that the Prophet ﷺ used to fast up until we say he's not going to يعني, end up his fasting days. And he sometimes stops fasting for so many days to limits that we say he may not fast any optional fasting anymore. And then يعني, he used to fast many, many days in a row and sometimes he did not used to fast many, many days in row. So she said, وَمَا رَأَيْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ اِسْتَكْمَلَ صِيَامَ شَهْرٍ قَطُّ إِلَّا رَمَضَانٍ And I never saw the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam completing or fasting a, a complete month, yani the whole month, except Ramadan. Why? Because Ramadan is obligatory to fast it all. وَمَا رَأَيْتُهُ فِي شَهْرٍ أَكْثَرَ مِنُ صِيَامًا فِي شَعْبَانٍ And then she said, and she made a commentary, she said, and I never saw him uh, in, uh, yani doing or performing optional fasting in any other months like it in Shaban. Yani in Shaban he does much more than any other months. That was the hadith narrated by Bukhari Muslim, but she also uh, said, as in the hadith narrated by Muslim alone, She said, I never saw the Prophet fasting in a month more than it in Shaban. He used to fast the whole month of Shaban. The whole month means 30 or 29. But she said he used to fast whole Shaban except for some days. Except for some days. That means he did not use to fast a, a whole month, but Ramadan. But Ramadan. Even Shaban, not the whole Shaban, uh, but most of it. Most of it. And uh, one may ask, why did he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to fast this much in Shaban? This question was raised by Usama ibn Zayd, radiyallahu ta'ala, anu to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa as in the hadith reported by the Sa'i, and authenticated by Al-Albani. Uh, Osama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhuma said, I said, قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَمْ أَرَكَ تَصُومُ مِنْ تَصُومُ شَهْرًا مِنَ الشُّهُورِ مَا تَصُومُ مِنْ شَعْبًا He said, Oh, my Savior of Allah, I never saw you fasting uh, in a month like it in Shaban. 
قال ذلك شهر يغفل الناس عنه وان دار زمان دار بيبل ار هيدلس اوف بين رجب ورمضان تو بين رجب ان رمضان وهو شهر ترفع فيه الاعمال الى رب العالمين 3 and it is a month in which the uh, records of deeds are raised to the lord of all universes فاحب ان يرفع عملي وانا صائم fourth and i like that my records of deed be raised to allah be ascended to allah while i am fasting four reasons why the prophet sallallahu gave more concern to shaban than any other months in the optional fasting and why he sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, made more concern in shaban with fasting than any other worships he did not mention more salah he did not mention more sadaqah he did not mention more uh, whatever but he mentioned more siyam fasting like when we know all these five things or four things sorry we gonna know how important shaban is first he said dhalika shahrun يغفر الناس عنه. That is a month people are headless of. How people are headless of? People uh, used to eat and drink through the whole year since Ramadan, since, since uh, last Ramadan finished. Normally, that's okay, that's allowed. So they are not. Uh, used to much fasting except in the last Ramadan because it's compulsory. As an optional, they did not used to do much more fasting. Maybe they have regular fasting like Mondays and Thursdays and maybe the uh, uh, three days in every month and maybe some of them do the fasting of the wood fasting a day and breaking another the, the following but this is still not most of the month the the, the highest is the fasting of the wood that is half of the month not most half that's why the professor salam said they are headless of headless of and they are headless some of them or majority of them because they are not fasting in Shaban, thinking that let us eat because Ramadan is approaching. And in Ramadan, we are not going to eat during the day. So let us eat yani, as much as we can of what uh, yani, uh, uh, yani, b- beloved or preferred food and like that. So this is kind of headlessness. This is kind of headlessness. Um, and then he mentioned something else. He said, Baina Rajab or Ramadan. What is the emphasis here? Why did the Prophet mention mentioned Rajab and Ramadan? Type Ramadan we know because it is a month of fasting and it is a month of very much uh, virtues. It is the month in which Allah chained the, the shayateen. It is the month in which the angels uh, desc- descend every single night of the uh, uh, yani last nights for Laylat or, or on Laylat al-Qadr. It is the month uh, in which uh, people are all fasting. It is the month in which they pray congressional night prayers. It is the month in which they recite uh, Quran more uh, than any other months. It is the month in which uh, they do atikaf. It is the month in which they, uh, by the end of it, they give the al fitr. It is the month uh, in which if they, yani, fast it, seeking, yani, believing and uh, sincerely for Allah and uh, seeking the reward from Allah, 
all the previous uh, sins will be forgiven, etc., etc. Too many virtues for Ramadan. That's why he mentioned Ramadan. Why did he mention Rajab? Because Rajab is the first preparation for Ramadan. First of all, Rajab is one of the four sacred months. Where the second month is it? Rajab, uh, Jumad al Tania, Jumad al Ula, Rabi al Awal, Rabi al uh, sorry, Rabi al Tani, Rabi al Awal. No, it's not like that. It is Rajab here single, alone. And you go, Jumad Tani, Jumad Awal, Rabi al Tani, Rabi al Awal, Safar, and then comes Muharram, the Qadi al Hajja. Uh, the, 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 these are the three sacred months, the brothers of Rajab. But between them and Rajab, between them and Rajab, uh, five months. Five months. Safar, Rabi Awar, Rabi Atani, Jumat Awar, Jumat Tani. Then Rajab. Why Allah separated Rajab from its brothers? Three brothers, Dhul Qadr, Dhul Hajjah, Muharram. Why? They are three in a row. Why Rajab away, uh, 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 far away from them? Because these four months, as Allah said in the Quran, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ These months, the only duty of these four sacred months is to train yourself to refrain from oppression. What oppression? Three types of oppression. Highest type of oppression is shirk. Is shirk. As Allah Ta'ala called it, sh- oppression, wrongdoing. As in the uh, advices of Luqman to his son in Surah Luqman. He said to his son, oh my son, do not associate anything with Allah and worship as association is the greatest uh, operation or dhulm. Right. The second is dhulm, which is not shirk, but it is very dangerous. That is a, a, an operation of uh, committing bid'ah, innovation, innovation, and uh, committing major sins. And, and even minor sins. So here we have three things. Here we have one thing which is the most dangerous, shirk, shirk al-akbar. Here we have, here shirk, akbar and asghar, all of them. Here we have the bid'ah, the ma'asiya, the sin, and the, uh, 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 the oppression of others, wronging others. How? by taking their belongings, by stealing, by robbing, by riba, by uh, whatever, cheating, deceiving, deception, or by uh, uh, speaking ill of them, criticizing them for no reason, no valid reason, Uh, speaking about their honors, backbiting them, surrendering them. And the third, the third, is uh, la, here, uh, here we said shirk, sorry, bid'ah, and major sins. Here is the oppression of others. So, Rajab, with, the, with his, uh, or with its three other brothers, Muharram, Dhul-Hijjah, dhul for training, now, you have, you have there uh, Ramadan, then six days of Shawwal. Then right away comes the months of, uh, second months and the months of Hajj. Shawwal is from the months of Hajj. From the months of Hajj. Which Allah said, فَمَنْ فَرَضَ بِهِنَّ الْحَجَّةِ فَلَا رَفَتَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَانَ بِالْحَجِّ So you have to avoid these things. Then comes, yeah, three months a course of or three months exercise of uh, avoiding oppression. And after that, you return back to oppression. That's shame on you. Let's say from Muharram until Jumadatani, the shaitan deceived you and made you to 
commit one of these three types of operations. Now, Rajab comes. Again, you have to refrain. Why? To make sure that Ramadan, the month of purity, does not uh, come to you while you are still dirty with oppression, with any type of oppression. The shirk, the bid'ah, the major sins, minor sins, and oppression, oppression others, oppressing others. So the month of Rajab is to prepare yourself by training of refraining from oppression. Then comes Sha'ban. Sha'ban is a month of action. There, uh, abandoning oppression. Here, performing a worship, which is what? Fasting. Because you are receiving a month of fasting, which is obligatory, Ramadan. So now in Sha'ban, you train yourself to, uh, and you prepare for Ramadan. Now you already prepared by staying away from the oppression, three qualities of oppression, categories of oppression. And now prepare yourself by performing the fasting. So when comes Ramadan, when Ramadan comes, you are going to be very capable to do the best in Ramadan. If you did not exercise in these two months in Rajab of abandoning the oppression by the three qualities, and in Sha'ban by performing fasting most of the days, then in Ramadan, you are not going to protect your fasting from what either uh, notify it or at least minimize the reward and the effect of it. As in the hadith, the Prophet said, he whoever does not abandon the uh, false speech and false actions, then Allah is not in need for him to abandon his food and drink. And in the other hadith, meaning uh, 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 do not let the day of your fasting and the day of, uh, in which you are not fasting be equal in how you behave. La. That's why he said, uh, and he, he said, and whenever someone uh, insult him or uh, yani, uh, curse him or say bad things to him or try to fight him, then let him say, oh, I, I'm someone, I'm somebody who's fasting, meaning I respect my fasting. So, if you want to do to do so and to be capable to protect your fasting in Ramadan, then get the exercise in Rajab and Shaban. In Rajab and Shaban. And that is not whole, but the pious brothers and sisters, they used to do this and do more. By what? By uh, focusing on the Quran in Ramadan. Focusing on the, uh, in Sha'ban, sorry. Focusing and reciting the Quran in Sha'ban. As in the author, Salamat ibn Kuhayl uh, said that it used to be said that the month of Sha'ban is the month of reciters. Reciters. This does not mean only the Hufad or the Imams who are going to read the Ramadan. La. All Muslims used to recite the Quran in Sha'ban to be familiar in spending much time in Ramadan with the Quran. And that's why uh, Amr ibn Qais al-Mula'i, one of the pious brothers and sisters, who used to uh, yani have, uh, he, he had a shop. That is the only way of uh, income for him. When Sha'ban comes, when the month of Sha'ban comes, he closes shop completely. For one whole month, he doesn't open it. He opens it in Ramadan, but in Sha'ban, no. Why? He just sits reciting the Quran day and night. As long as he's awake, he just recites the Quran. He frees himself for reciting the Quran. Look at that. 
So that is how we need to uh, treat Shaban, which is uh, w- which we are in now, and we are still in the beginning of it. We are on the fourth of Shaban. We still have twenty six to twenty five days. It is good to prepare yourself. If you don't fast until it is the midst of Shaban, then you are not allowed to fast then you are not allowed to fast. Because uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith, إِذَا انْتَصَفَ شَعْبَان فَلَا تَصُومُ إِذَا انْتَصَفَ شَعْبَان فَلَا تَصُومُ إِلَّا إِذَا انْتَصَفَ شَعْبَان فَلَا تَصُومُ uh, when it is the mirrors of Shaban, then do not fast. By this command for whom? Not for all. Now it is for a person who did not fast at all from beginning of Shaban until it is the 14th. Then he says, tomorrow I'm going to start fasting. We say, no, you are not allowed. You are not allowed to start fasting on the 15th onward. Why? Because uh, you did not fast before. But if he is someone who has a habit to fast three days in each month, but in the month of Shaban, he was sick or he was traveling or he was very busy to limits that he could not fast any day until it was the merits of Shaban. Should he fast as a regular? Three days or no? Some of our elms said no, because he did not fast any day before middle of Shabbat. Some said, but this is a habit that is going on every month to fast three days. Now, in this month, he did not have the opportunity to fast uh, yani 13th, 14th, 15th. So now he wants to fast and he is free from 16, 17, 18, or something. Some said it is allowed because it is not just for Shaban, but it is uh, the regular monthly fasting that is uh, used to. Uh, one more thing. Uh, by the end of Shaban, you should leave a gap of one or two days uh, not to be fasted. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said um, as in the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu reported by Bukhari and Muslim لا يتقدمن أحدكم رمضان بصوم يوم أو يومين إلا أن يكون رجل كان يصوم صومه فليصوم ذلك اليوم He said do not precede Ramadan by fasting a day or two, except for someone who has a habit to fast like Mondays and Thursdays, or fast the fasting of Dawood, or fast three days of the month, but this month he could not fast until it is end of Shaban. Then we say he is allowed, as in the hadith reported by Bukhari Muslim. And also, one should not fast. Uh, the day in which it is doubtful whether it is 30th of Shaban or 1st of Ramadan. And this doubt uh, came from what? From that the, the, the moon could not be sighted. The, uh, the sky is blocked by uh, wind, uh, uh, dusty wind or sandstorm or by clouds. So they could not see the moon to know tomorrow Ramadan or moon is not born. So tomorrow is 30th of Shaban. In this situation, one should not fast as in the author of uh, Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu ta'ala anuma, which is reported by Ahl sunan uh, meaning Abu Dawood and Nasai ibn Majid Tirmidhi where he said, 
He who fasts the day in which people are doubtful if it is 30th of Shaban or 1st of Ramadan because of what we said, clouds or uh, sandstorm, then he had disobeyed Abu Qasim. Disobeyed Abu Qasim. So that means when it is uh, cloudy or dusty on the 29th and by the Maghrib of 29th, people could not see the moon, not because the moon is in born, but because there, because there is uh, something to block sighting it, which is either clouds or uh, sandstorm, then one should not fast. These uh, all about uh, the virtues of the month of Shaban and the preparation for Ramadan. May Allah Ta'ala make us from those who do good a Shaban and do much more better things in Ramadan and make us much more better outside Ramadan than it in Ramadan, meaning uh, after Ramadan than it in Ramadan, meaning increase our Iman by the uh, by the uh, effect of the deeds in Ramadan. Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Barakallah fiqh. Beautiful talk. May Allah Alaykum. reward you. Amen. We're going to let you go, Shaykh, um, because I know you've got a lesson uh, yeah. shortly. And we yeah, sahih. Sahih. Khair, inshallah. We'll see you, inshallah. Uh, by the way, next week, I'm not available. I'm, I'm flying on uh, Wednesday to Sierra Leone for one week. And then we're going to break next week. And inshallah, we resume the week after. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Wa tirja' bas salama. Allah. Allah yisallim wa kibarik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.